So hello YouTube people, this is uh, a live Twitch stream of the United Sky of Cameron's game, but stopping and starting the recording makes my life easier when it comes to sticking this on YouTube. This is how we are looking going into the game against the Rocket Motive Git Stompers. We aren't too bad, we've got two tackle and these boys have a hell of a job to do today because this is just bludge spam all across the team. Um, the opponent is Humasep. We've not played Humasep before, but he's been around Rebel for a while. And this is the team. So the key being these four stand firm pieces with block and guard. Uh, Mighty blow on two of them as well. Roxanne Rockfist is his own killer. And um, we've got Mighty Blow and Guard on Scarlet Stone Crusher as well. Uh, this player here, Brook Brickwall, is niggled. We like that. That's good. But we've also got a thrower here at the top and two catchers with dive and tackle. Um, I don't think the Kemri will be doing too much dodging here. But we will see how it goes. So, Humasep's currently got a fair bit of cash in the bank. So, don't know if he's going to hire another player to go with that. I know Humasep's in Twitch chat right now. So, if he wants to just give me a shout when he's ready, then we can sort of go from there. I think it's the top Zon team in Rebel up to this point. I don't know if there might be one up in REL 2 as well. Um, I'm thinking about Fall's team, Fallen Wonders. But they're currently third in the league. Our, um, our Humaseps a lot. Yeah, Fallen Wonders are in REL 2, but they're down in 11th with an inverse record to Humasep, who's 3-0-1 up to this point. Humasep is ready to start and ready to leave Twitch. So, yeah, Humasep, if you just... Well, he probably won't be here to hear this, so I'll drop him the invite in a minute's time so yeah all of that all of that dodge we have a lot of work to do it, it's it's a weird game this one i kind of feel like this won't end in a draw there's two ways this goes either we don't hurt him and he and the dodge does we don't roll any powers and he'll probably take this just because his team is going to be irritating for my team to deal with or the flip side of that is we do hurt him. At which point we'll probably be in quite a strong spot. So he's got 180k in the bank. Of his own cash. Ooh. Scum's a wizard out of his own bank, eh? I see how it is. That means we have to go into hurty mode. So I was wondering whether he was going to hire a player, but he's been keeping this one on the quiet. Scum's a wizard. Wizard's, of course, a nightmare for good old Kemri. I think we're both going for the win. I don't think this will end in a draw. So yeah, as I've said, this all comes down to the two Blitzerars, the Tackle Lads. So not only do we have to make sure that they're hitting something every turn, but we also need to keep them protected as well, because... Uh, right, so... The absolute right call here is defence. We treat this as if, as if it's elves. So we got to make sure that we keep these two lads protected here in the back line because the first chance Humasep gets, he's going to absolutely gun straight for them with his own mighty blow. We'll leave a thrower on the field just in case because he does have block. Um, he's a bit better protected than the others. Now, I am going to put all of the guard skeletons together here. Just to force him to commit more players with guard in here that we can maybe then tie up on the next turn. Kembry defend first all the time. Yeah, I, I much prefer defending first anyway, but especially with these lads. Yay! 
So as the table stands, Humasep is third. Of course, he would go top if he wins. Uh, he'd be 4-0-1. We have recovered from the 0-0-2 start to be 2-0-2 now. So we are seventh out of 14. If we win, we'd probably go above Humasep up into the playoff places. So plenty to play for here. Yeah, the guard skellies are nice, but are not the most important part of this team. This guy has a job to do today, and that is who's going to get blitzed. He's going to commit some players to this. And blitz Babio O'Reilly, I know that. But at the same time, in order to do that, he has to commit some players up against this Tomb Guardian. And I am just looking to maximise maximize three dice blocks today. Come on, blitz. Ooh, that is a very short kick. That has got touchback scream, sort of screamed all over. Throw a rock is cancelled by my stadium. Interesting. So he does need to clear those skellies off. Gets a power with the first one. Double push on the guard. Plus one fame is with Humaset. There's a knockdown on the other guard, so no mighty blow on this one, but it's armor value seven. Doesn't necessarily matter. Thick skull. Saves the day. Yeah, it's a nice kick for me that. It, it means that if it fails, then I'm all over this. Like a rash. Another push on that guard skeleton. Jose Mourinho doing good work. So, unless he fouls, which I don't think he will on a skeleton, we're not going to take any removals this turn. So the task for me now is just wait and see how this front line looks. And then wait and see where we are committing the Tomb Guardians. Because we are just going to stroll up to this front line. And ask a few questions. Yeah, he's not got an Agi 4. Which means it's, it's an interesting Amazon team. No stat ups really anywhere on it. In fact, no stat ups anywhere on it full stop. So there's no Agi 4 to make this safe. If you wanted nines that pickup, this could go fairly drastically wrong for him. Well, he used to have a plus strength blitzer, but it's kind of irrelevant for this game. Now, this I don't mind so much. I think that's pretty good strategy from him. And he does fail the pickup. And I tell you what. Things just got a little rowdy in here, didn't they? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Right, so... We can get a three dice here. Quite comfortably. Now, I don't think I want to lock to scatter the ball again. I don't think I've got good recovery here. I think my job right now is to make life difficult for him. By just getting as many tackle zones around this and I, as I can. So I think the Tomb Guardians can do some work over here. We're going to do our usual trick of splitting them into two teams of two, the Tomb Guardians, for the time being. He can take blocks there if he wants them. Honestly, I think the Tomb Guardians might be okay in this sort of area. Come to think of it. Let's have a think. I'm trying to decide where I want my Blitz to go. We've got two real options with that. Can I either go for the stand firm player? With the, it's a higher reward, 
but obviously if we if we roll a double push then we aren't doing anything useful there um the flip side being we can go for the catcher which doesn't have stand firm However, if we do go for that player and do knock it down, then we can get the Tomb Guardians into a nicer spot, I think. Can we make it a three dice? Not quite. We will go with the pro player. He ain't gonna stand, he is gonna stand firm. Well, that's a pile on. No questions asked on that one. One down. Okay, so... We are slightly in our own way. But that's fine. We gotta go... We gotta go basing with the TGs. And I'm fine doing that as well. Think about where you might go. Right, let's put the strength four tackle on the ball. So I'm going to put the dirty player there. But I think if he wants to blitz that, that doesn't do a lot for him this turn. So I'm quite happy to tie those players up there. Right, so now for my next trick, we're going to bring you around there. We're going to roll our three dice. We're going to find a pow. And we're going to put you there and follow that up for a big old front line. And the thrower art is going to come round the back here to make life difficult. This feels like a solid start. Yeah, that's pretty much the dream start for me. It's a permanent stand firm mighty blow guard gone. One of the blitzers as well. Um, the ball in three high strength tackle zones. And Homosep is going to need a lot of dice. Yeah, the brain fart on the stand firm. Literally the moment that thing stood firm, it was an instant pile on. I... I I probably wouldn't have followed up if he'd stepped off. Because that would have potentially opened me up to a big foul from one of his worst players, and we don't want to allow that. I imagine he'll target the throw, Ra. But at some point, he might just have to try the old six plus sure hands here. <laughs> Difficult to see how he's going to get the ball cleared unless he starts chucking dice uphill as well. He can get a one dice there if he brings a guard in. But yeah, it's two more SPP for Tala Swift. Another casualty. Long way to go. <laughs> Viking cop, stop it. Dauntless would be handy in this situation, wouldn't it? So here comes his one dice, and that is a push. But I'm I'm okay with that as long as it's not a knockdown, because that gives him the full movement to reposition, or indeed just take a free hit here. That's a two dice now, and that's a knockdown. Two 
Team Guardian is down for now. That's the killer coming in there. We've got ourselves a scrum, ladies and gentlemen. And that is exactly what I wanted. That's a one dice. Oh. Oh. I think he will. He does, he gets a push. So he, he gives me a free hit here. So four plus pick up with sure hands is good this time. But still needs a dodge to be safe. Gets away with it. Okay, so what this does mean is that the situation is recovered from his point of view somewhat. That Tomb Guardian now goes there to tie up the breakaway. So there's a lot of potentially high value targets for me here. I don't think I can get the killer. Ooh, we can't get that either. And that leaves me with way too much guard around to deal with all of that nonsense. So we need a new plan. Oh, we can put some guard in there. That gives me a three dice there, and a two dice there, two dice there, so that's a three dice, that's why you make things three dice. One dice, two uphill, one dice. That now becomes a two dice if we stand that skeleton up. Only problem is, I think we need to dodge this player out after that. Because otherwise we're giving up a palm hit thanks to this guard. Take that. Happy days. Oh, where's another one gone? Two SPP for the Tomb Guardian. Of course, we don't give up a hit if we pile on whatever we roll. We'll pro that. And we'll get it as well. Another one gone. So we've got guard in here. We can get guard in there. I still think we dodge. We have used pro. He can put a guard in there, he can put a guard in there, can't he? Oh.
It's mighty blow on the dirty player when we roll that. Cheeky one dice. It's still a useful result. Because that position in there makes his life harder for getting players into here. We're now up by three, and it's three casualties as well. So this isn't looking too bad right now. So far, so good for the uh, the attack, the Blitzer, Blitzer Raw boys, I should say. Two casualties for Tyler Swift and one for the Tomb Guardian. Ron Boneman still yet to get into the game. But it's 11 versus 8 on his drive. The, the goal now is to force out the offensive wizard. That is a one dice. And that's the potential escape route, isn't it? One dice pout on Billy Ray Osiris. Does he have a bench? He has one on the bench. So, no, he doesn't have a bench anymore. So he's got maximum nine players for the rest of the game. I doubt he's going to hand to the catcher and potato this. I think he'll just scream. No, he is going to hand to the catcher and catch does its job. I feel the potato will be weak because this Blitzrar still has really good range. But that doesn't help matters. So now he's got no reroll for anything else he's about to do. It is not difficult for me to get a two dice on this. I mean, if he scores, then I, I still have to contend with the wizard, but the removal rate is such so far that the wizard might not be too much of a problem. Mighty Bolt, Tala Swift, I wonder. Even then, I've still got Ron Bowman, who can do the job. But this killer isn't stand firm, so we can actually just potentially use that skeleton to knock Roxanne Rockfist clear. And then we've got a shot on the ball. Dodge works. He's going to go for the one dice, isn't he? He rolls a push. Well, that actually makes my life easier. Pros it into another push. Well, that's now a natural three dice on his killer. I'm putting that down as brave. It's a couple of GFIs to get an assist now. Six plus dodge into there, fails. There are a few ways to skin this particular cat. Two GFIs from you. You're going to go no further than that, really, so you can just do that now. So there's the potential here for a chain push 
to free up both of these guys, but I don't get to use... I think I just want to do that. I don't understand why I wouldn't just want to do that. Sorely tempted to pile that on. But we won't. All right. So the idea now is it's going to be two GFIs for a two dice. Or we could just go with the one dice. We've got... Uh, it's only a five plus to knock them down. I think the two dice play is better. So the question now becomes, what do we do with these guys? You can go there to lock that down. You can go there. We just need the Tomb Guardian back here somewhere and also not get in our own way. Right, so it's GFI time. But I think we bail out if we fail the first one. Uh, now we can't bail out. We've got to commit a reroll to that now. Ah! Damn it. Not the best timing for that. Can he stall it out? Probably not. Yeah, that was full potato. If he stalls it, we're going to look to punish the rest of the team. Or certainly what elements of the team we can still punish. That was a 1 in 36 about I'm also down to 1 reroll, which is pretty grim for the rest of the half. It's two snake eyes I've rolled now. Good. So he is going to look to try and stall this out as long as he can. That makes sense. And that is... A, well, that's a snake eye into a stun. Right. So we still have a shot on the ball. So we can get another three dice here. <laughs> it's all GFIs all the time. You in there is fine. back and be loose. Right, so the idea is we can three dice that essentially for free. We might as well pile on at this stage. There goes Jolie. That's another stand firm gone. That's a movement boss as well, wow. Movement five, does that become movement four? <laughs> Apo didn't do MNG. So we Apo the line woman. Still not coming back. It 
Two dice push is good enough because that frees up the glitterer. Steak Mittens, thank you very much for the tier one sub. Nine months now. Very much appreciated. I don't have anything to foul yet. I'm killing them too regularly. But we're going to go for the play on the ball. Uh, I can't commit the last reroll. GFI is the bane of the Kemri team once again. Another snake. So that stun becomes a pain because now he's going to score. Okay. Fair enough. So 1 0. But we've kind of done good work defensively. The Apo's gone. We get some LOS hits. Does the KO come back? It does. So we've got a full team. We are playing against one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and potentially less. On a different day, that first, and of course we've got an extra reroll now because Mr. Pratchetep comes out on the field and has leader. Hmm, maybe we could have committed the last reroll. <laughs> Quote from Homosep's girlfriend, your players are all gone always, can't you just make a better team? Yeah, so different day, you might make that double GFI, you get your two dice on the ball, and that might be the drive sorted. Uh, now, we've got four turns to equalise, but we do have to contend with the wizard. Now, the question will be whether Homerset wants to use that this half, if he feels he can defend it out before half-time. He might save that for the second half if he thinks he's got a chance to steal. Them's be the decisions. Meanwhile, I am just going to set up as many three dice blocks as I dare on the front line. And just go from there, really. You know what? We'll even commit because these guys are so deep. We'll commit Ron Bone Man to this one. And just take a cheeky two there, and then three with these. Uh, can we... They're quite deep to blitz, aren't they? I'll put you dead centre and see what we can't do. Is there a kicker in play? There is not. Well, I kind of didn't want Mr. Pratchetep under the ball. I don't want him getting bolted, but he'll drop it anyway. Oh, we reroll for the Amazons, so it's two apiece now. Sure enough. Something about players called Terry. Right. Three dice with block is as safe as it gets. Nothing doing there. That might just become the Blitz target, to be honest. Uh, in fact, it will. 
because these things are like super valuable. In we go. Ooh. Ooh, nothing happened. And nothing happened there either. Well, we can have another go. We get six dice. In theory, on six dice. You should find a POW, but we don't. So yeah, it's in the apple has gone. The mini heart attacks will begin. It's gonna get fouled, I'm not gonna lie about that. Uh foul before pickup. Pick up before foul. I ain't picking up with him, I don't trust him. Okay, so the foul is one in six to turn over. Unless we break armor, in which case it's slightly more. The pick up is one in four to fail and turn over. But I kind of don't want to leave the ball completely free. Because that would be mental. Ooh. We got it. What a pleasant surprise. We're going to leave a wide line here. And we're technically going to do that. Five plus power with dirty player. That is the last of the stand firm. So we came here to remove all the stand firm and we've got rid of it all in the first half. Good. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players left. One of them stunned. Doesn't even get a knockdown there. So the reason I've picked up on the on the Agi 2 is because if he does bolt, we have the Agi 3 who can pick up. And that feels like it makes a bit of sense. This will be a three plus dodge. Because you're not going to give away free Tomb Guardian hits. Oh, and I have, for the record, found my Blitz target already. <laughs> In fact, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put you in there. And then we're going to put you in there. I think I want this. Because that's the sure hands. But I feel like this gives me better pitch position. So that's a high value target, but it does have Fend and I probably can't pile on. That is just generally speaking, it gives me the, this channel to move down on this side. And he's going to have to make a bunch of one in nines because he ain't getting any blocks in here in a hurry. Could base you. Don't hate that. Yeah, we're going to go through this play. I think that's a sensible way to go. 
We don't want to get overly greedy here. So can we make that a three dice without giving up too much pitch position, I wonder? We probably can. So, as long as we don't hex a skull, this should be safe enough. There goes Jules. Now, it's technically a base cage. I don't see any reason not to foul that. Oh, we get a stun and a send-off. So the dirty player's gone. So that's now six casualties, no KOs. Will he burn the bolt? Nope, he'll one in nine that dodge into a stun. Right, so now I can do whatever I want. The theory being here, we could maybe take down his entire team and make the bolt kind of irrelevant. So you're going to come and step up to here. We gotta be careful here because this does have sidestep. And it could be a pain. But I also can't make that a three dice easily. What I'm also not wanting to do here is go right over to the sideline. Because if he bolts and the ball ends up there, there's a chance of it going in the crowd. Okay, who I blitz will depend on the result of this. He's got Fend, he should step away. He's still anyway. Right, so now we can sort of finish off that screen and we go for the killer now. It is as simple as that. So that is a three dice. Yeah, the push is fine. Free that up in case you want it. That is not what I want to do. Pick our way through the, the bodies here. I think we'll re-roll that. Oh dear. That wasn't very clever, was it? I've run a lot of snakes despite being in this position. So I can't really complain. There's the bolt. The scatter's pretty good for me. But I do only have one turn to pick this up. And I will need a GFI as well. Well, if he blitzes uh, 
Blitzer's Pratchett F down. We've got a problem. Doesn't. Can we roll? Does re-roll. Gets him. Okay, right. Problem. That's a KO. First rule of throw, Raz. It's always a KO. So you can score with two GFIs. You can't score. The Tomb Guardian is a scoring threat. It's probably going to be Swift. And it gets touchdown duties because we do have Pro on that player as well. So the Wizard's gone. All the diving tackles on the Tomb Guardian. Right, you just have to move out the way. Can I realistically make that a three dice? No, I can't. So we go with the two. And if we can push to there, then there's still a gap through. Okay, well, we're not re-rolling that. Killer gets away with it for now. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The hard bit's done. Now this is the bit we struggle with. We're in. Just. I tell you what. We are just about in. You've got to say that looks good now for the second half. Hello, Manus. Tell you what, I was holding my breath and all. 1-1 one, one half type. So the wizard is gone. We've survived the wizard. And we still scored in the first half. Uh, does the Agi 3 come back? He doesn't, because he rolls 1s and 2s. So we can't pick up the ball with Terry now, which means that Ho Russell Brand gets to go. Uh, we get two more skeletons on the field. We are down to just 11, but we're up against six. And that is okay. Right, so you're going to just hang around here just in case of Blitz. And then we're just going to try and chin everything on the front line again. <laughs> Ceremol, they're, they're doing all right, these Camry. They're not doing too bad. The killers are quite a thing. Deep kick, high kick. This could be useful, couldn't it? Yeah, this is the good throw, Ra. I'm going to have to fire him, Ho Terry Pratchett. He's pure bloat, AG3. I am down a reroll, of course, because Terry's not on the field. Uh, right, three dash with block is nice and safe. I suppose we'll leave you there. Two dice with block is the next best. Big old pow. No reason not to at this stage. Ooh, survived. Would you look at that? Pow on the catcher. Also survives. So now we've got another go here. And we can now make this a three dice. 
for Tyler Swift, who's getting a few SPP today. I hope Thomas T's watching this. Yeah, we didn't use Mighty Blow. Now we did. Well, technically we didn't. Oh, that's a niggle. That sucks. The poor old homoset. Um, there is no one who can reach the ball. What, you thought we were going to show mercy? Uh, no KOs yet. Well, there was one KO and it came back and that probably wasn't the best idea for the KO. So, I did say this was going to go one of two ways. Either we murder them or we don't. We have our answer. So, looking to blitz with this one because you can potentially get a level there with some SVP. Get a knockdown on the skelly. Will we see a removal my way? No. Two GFIs are good, so we have to move the ball before blitzing that thing, because it could sidestep onto it. Uh, it. It's not too difficult to move the ball, has to be said. Because we will just shift it to here for now. Right, you can just base you. And then we're going to tie you down either side. Go with the pro. Use the pro. And the same thing. This is reaching the stage where it might be time to score with a Tomb Guardian. Five left. Ah. Slightly less left. Well, still alive. No reason not to. Don't mind if I do, says Ho Russell Brand, as he just picks his way through the carcasses of the Amazon team.
Uh, what did I think of the timing of the wizard use? Honestly, it was probably as good as he was ever going to get. Based on the state of the game. Probably as good as he was ever going to get. Because, I mean, what use would a wizard have been now? He had five players, you know, so... His, his chances of recovery are slim to none. We'll go for the foul here. Stone is fine. He may stay down. Stranger things have happened. I mean, fair play for giving it a go, but Jill has knocked herself out. I should hand off to a Tomb Guardian. Five plus catch for Juanubis Manubis Fangio. Easy. KO is good. We may push for 3 1 because touchdown difference matters. No need to even do that with a protected killer. Homosep, I think this one might be done. I assume you you are getting up. Brave. Well, you've got a bliss on a skeleton. That makes sense. So we can make that a three dice, no reason not to. Not quite. Quite. Three players on the field. Maximum of five. The outcome of this might determine what we do.
Okay. I'm afraid it's stole. Ooh, hello, one dice pow. Chance for a level here. So still a chance to get some mighty blow hits with the Tomb Guardians, which we should definitely do. There is method to this madness, by the way, folks. It's a one plus foul, for the record. Oh, it's a send off. Well, the thing is, we now can't turn over and score in one turn. So... What I was hoping for is if we could pitch clear quick enough, we might have been able to get two free touchdowns. But, alas, that was not to be the case. So, as it turns out, we can't get the last one. So, I guess we'll just up his running yards. Yeah, that game went the way we wanted it to go. Don't think there was too much in the way of permanent damage for Homerset. See you come back. So I've had quite a few sent off at this point. Imotary Pratchetep's still out, of course. Uh, so we'll put you and you. Flanked by you. Now we're just setting up like this in case of... Something daft like a uh, a riot or something weird. Because we could see a riot. I don't think you'll want to. To blitz. Oh boy. I wonder if Mr. Fangio 
Fancy some SPP. I think we're good. Well, that about sums that up. Yeah, unlucky Homosep, not your day at all. I think, as I said, mate, that was going to go one of two ways, and it went the way that I wanted it to. Three wins on the spin for the Kemrits now. Uh, rolled a three. It's not the end of the world if we roll that and get worse. No, we rolled it and got worse. Oh, well, Jethro Tull as well is now one SBP away from level 26 armor breaks to four. Yeah, good MVP for Jane as well. It's quite a haul. 5, 7, 10, 19, 23 SBP for the boys there. Not at all bad. So confirm that and then we can go have a quick look at the lead table for Division 2, which now sees us up in fourth. Tied on record with Homosep. We both have the same touchdown difference, um, so I don't know how Rebel.net will see that one. Uh, might be that I sneak into the top three, which is the playoff spot. But it's now three wins on the spin. Some very nice SPP for me as well. I uh, didn't level anything that game. But what we do have is um, another Tomb Guardian, now within two casualties of a level, and this one within one casualty. We're not going to vanity pass, most likely, but within one casualty of a level. Next up for us, it is Natty Dreads. Chaos Dwarfs. However, not Chaos Dwarfs like you've ever seen before. 1470. They're missing a couple of players. Have a look at Jimmy Cliff. That is an armor value 7. Niggled Chaos Dwarf blocker. He'll be back for our game. I am excited for it. Um, elsewhere, they're also missing another Chorf blocker. For Because they do have a game before they play me, so he'll be back. But uh, Big Easy is up against... Uh, who are you up against this week, Big Easy? You are playing... Oh, Dark Elves. So you probably shouldn't take too much more damage. But yeah, Jimmy Cliff's clawed himself, it seems, at some stage. But yeah, that's a good win for us. Up into the top four now. And after the, if it wasn't for the dreadful start we had, we might be right up amongst it. But can't complain with 3-0-2, considering the teams. The two teams we've lost to are these two teams at the top. So we need to outgun them over the rest of the season. Let's try and get into the playoffs for the second season run. Next two are against Natty Dreads, who are right at the bottom of the table at the moment. But I'm sure that'll change. And then Major Bites Norse after that.